Hey everybody, Mike Gary for Geek Pride with our inaugural song of Ice and Fire tabletop miniatures game battle report at the Vulnerable Panicked and Weakened Club Night in Element Games. So first things first, uh, this is a concept game, a trial game to see what works, what doesn't work. There's a lot of channels out there doing a lot of different things and so there's a lot of things that people like and people dislike and we have to try and take that on board so um, as much as there is audio on the day uh, of us chatting back and forth about the game we've decided that maybe it's best just to have the main moves uh, and a bit of commentary over the top um, going forward if that's not what you like then by all means let us know and we can do the chit chat and all that stuff but it's basically us trying to figure out uh, what people like and what people don't like and what works and what doesn't work going forward <clears throat> excuse me my lord might we move on with the task at hand and provide the viewers with a breakdown of the respective orders of battle or should i just send a raven <laughs> very droll grandmaster well you sort out the orders of battle i shall prepare myself for the following commentary very well my lord our foe on this eve is one that hails from the north. Not the civilized north, mind you, but the one beyond the wall. These savages and wildlings are led by a lesser-known commander called Dave. We doubt he has been knighted, so his honorific is just Dave. Dave's forces are one of beast and monster, headed by the giant, Mag the Mighty, allowing Dave to replace his tactics deck with a specific one for his commander, filled with foul tricks dishonorable shenanigans, and much more. Mag is a giant, but as a commander, it is reduced price, from 9 to 5, only takes a wound with every two hits, hits like, well, a giant, and lashes out when defeated. With him, he brings Lady Val who provides these wildling forces with some additional movement, replacing a tactic board spot with the ability for a unit to make a maneuver action. Also, the turn cloak himself, Mance Raider is present, allowing Dave to draw an additional card whenever an influenced unit activates or is targeted by the tactics board. The forces Mag commands are very much monstrous and unnatural. There are three units of Raiders, nothing to Raven home about stats-wise, but they are able to reduce the cost of an attachment by one, providing a weak unit with a cheap upgrade. In this case, Dave has positioned a skin changer in each, allowing the unit to deploy a bear within six inches of any friendly wildling unit, allowing for potential outflanking shenanigans wherein he could drop a bear behind his foe. No one seems to fight fair these days. The bear has sundering attacks and reduces an enemy's armor by an additional one, providing three attacks on threes and minus two to armor saves, a horrendous minus four should it reach the rear of the formation. Anyway, with this undisciplined rabble and their beastly familiars comes Varamir Sixskins, a true wildling, if I ever did see one, and comes with the option to bring a shadow cat, a pack of wolves, and an eagle. The shadow cat, an outflank on any flank before deployment, and has disrupt, reducing the save of any unit engaged with it by one. The wolves do not outflank, but when engaged with an enemy unit, prevent them from using any abilities or tactics cards, Obviously not honorable dire wolves. On top of these four-legged ferals, Varamir has an eagle that he can place on a unit at the start of a turn, and each time that unit performs a maneuver or march, he or his cat or dogs can perform a two-inch shift. Finally, Mag has brought himself a friend, a savage giant that packs a proverbial punch, only takes a wound every two hits, is vicious like Mag, and gets additional attacks when it takes damage. Think Shaggy Dog, but a lot bigger, heavier, and more unpleasant. We will need to steel ourselves against such monstrous foes. Our forces are ones of superior quality, but fewer in number. Something made up for, I hope, by their sheer ferocity in battle. Lord Geary of House Stark has called upon the Great John Umber himself to lead his forces against this wildling incursion. The Great John and the Umbers do not fear death or casualties. Indeed, they welcome it. The Great John's tactics cards revolve around taking damage and doing damage. His abilities giving him and his unit the ability to take damage and charge a full six inches, and then a separate order that allows him to carry out a second charge, or march, should they destroy their foe. 
both useful and potentially crucial in the battle to come. With him, the Great John has brought with him two units of Umber Berserkers. These North men only get better the more damage they take and can pump out a catastrophic nine attacks on their final rank, as well as giving them a three plus to save and three plus in morale. Their starts being a five plus save and five plus morale respectively on full ranks. Within one of these units, the Great John has placed himself and in the other, a foreign mercenary has been stationed. Dario provides his unit with both critical blow and precision at the expense of taking a wound on a one. But as the saying goes, whatever doesn't kill us can only make us stronger. To aid in the harrying of the foul beasts arrayed against us, the Umbers have sent a detachment of ravagers. Similar to berserkers in stats and taking damage makes them stronger. But in cavalry form, and with critical blow. They also gain vicious and make the enemy panicked should they attack a unit with less ranks than them. Not to be left out the ever faithful and honorable Tullys have provided us with some of their finest knights. The Tully Cavaliers gain two attacks per rank on the charge, have Sundering, an impressive three plus save, and should they pass a morale check, can either heal themselves one wound or another unit within short range. House Stark's ladies have also joined the fight. Catelyn, the matriarch of the house, provides the unit she influences with the ability to attack on their highest dice roll. She also discards a nasty condition token on the unit she graces. With her, she brings along her daughter Sansa. She will be instrumental in providing a more infinite use of finite cards. Being able to pick up useful cards from the discard pile when she replaces a tactics board position. Finally, a shadowy figure has been seen around camp. Introduced by Ladei Arya, Jaken has the ability to either provide precision to any unit he influences, or more importantly, can copy the influence of any non-combat unit. In this case, the Starks could have two Lady Starks buffing their Umber allies. The Starks have a numerous and determined foe to deal with, Commanded by an experienced general, who will win the day is up to the old gods and the commanders themselves. Now, if you will excuse me, I am to leave Winterfell shortly along the King's Road to document the wars and battles to come. You may join me if you wish, and if you have the stomach for it, otherwise I will leave you in the capable hands of my lord, Sir Matthew, as he goes through the retelling of the first battle. Welcome honoured guests. Today's battle is a clash of kings. Three objective markers are placed in the middle of the board, one in the centre and one in each flank, six inches from the flank edge. Our generals are then provided with five objective cards. They then take turns to choose two of these and place them on their commanding unit. The effects of these cards can be used once per game, the commanding unit choosing one at the start of its activation and it lasting until the end of the round. At the start of the battle, terrain was rolled for and placed, resulting in two sets of stakes, a hedge and a bog. The bog is rough and hindering, meaning you have minus one when moving through it to your movement, and also don't get the advantage of your charge bonus if charging through it. The stakes are dangerous and destructible, meaning that should you move through them you take d3 plus one wounds, but should you start your turn within one inch you can destroy them using an activation. Finally, hedges are destructible, rough, and provide you with cover, meaning that should you start your turn within one inch, you can use an activation to destroy it. It's minus one when moving through it, and it prevents line of sight being drawn through it for the purposes of shooting. Points in this mission are scored as normal. For killing a unit, you get one point, excluding bears, the shadow cat, and the wolves. You also gain a point for holding an objective from turn two onwards. And finally, you get a point for killing a unit with your commander, and two points if you kill another commander with your commander. It should also be noted that the bears, the shadow cat, and the wolves cannot hold objectives. They can, though, give up a point if a commander kills that unit. 
having sorted out terrain, the missions and started our deployment, it came very apparent that Dave wasn't deploying the way I thought he was going to deploy. Now, before the game, Dave had basically said to me about his list and what it can do and what its potentials could do. So basically, it's a drop bear unit. It can basically deploy units on spawning points, which are other free folk units, and then cause havoc in, in the back of your ranks. Um, but because um, I had brought my cavalry and I'd put them on the flanks, he wasn't too confident about using that technique. And so he deployed pretty much everything bar his shadow cut on the board. Which was great for me because that meant there was no bears spawning in behind my units when I moved forward uh, and causing me uh, no end of mischief. Had I not brought my cavalry, or had I at least bunched everything up in the centre of the battlefield, uh, Dave would have then deployed in a certain way that would have blocked off his deployment for uh, two of his raider units. What he would do then is wait for me to move forward. He would flank his uh, shadow cat, and then he would move a giant forward or one of the monsters forward, providing a space for one of his raider units to deploy. And once they deploy, they can then... Uh, spawn their bear and their bear can spawn six inches from the shadow cat and that means I've got a shadow cat and a bear up my backside So turn one begins and Dave has nominated myself to go first He also informs me that he's not going to bring on his shadow cat and he's going to place Faramir's eagle on my ravagers with this token on my unit, any time it performs a manoeuvre or a march, Viremir, his wolves or his shadow cat can make a two inch shift. As my first activation, I use Sansa and place her on letters, giving me two tactics cards and the ability to put a token on an enemy unit. Which unit would that be? I would like you to... Uh Weaken your savage giant. I thought so. I already had the weaken out. Ready for, you. <laughs> for Dave's first action, he places Mont's Raider on horses, providing one of his units with a free maneuver. He chooses Mag and moves it forward five inches. Retrospectively, he then influences Mag with Mont's Raider and provides himself with an additional tactics card. For my next activation, I deliberate a bit and then place Catelyn on crowns. I then kindly ask Dave to roll a panic test for one of his raiders at minus one, which he passes. Dave counters by placing Val on bags and then proceeds to remove the weakened token that I worked so hard to place on his giant. Moving away from the tactics board, um, I decide it's probably best that the umbers need to start umbering and move them forward towards the stakes. The idea being that I can destroy them next turn. Why you might ask? Well, because I don't want any giants crashing through them and doing more damage than they need to. In response to my bold and yet slightly hazardous move, Dave picks up a unit of raiders and moves them forward. Having activated his raiders, he then picks up his bear and leapfrogs it forward to place in front of the unit. Well, as Mama raised no coward, I charge my umbers 12 inches up the board and face down the bear. Dave then counter moves, moving a unit of raiders forward and then tagging along their bear to join the party. It's also interesting to note that when Dave finishes his move, he generally puts his units at a sort of slightly jaunty angle, which makes it harder for his opponent to charge in and get a good frontage. Deciding to advance my Ravagers up the left flank, Dave then uses the Eagle token that are on the Ravagers to shift his wolf pack two inches to the left. I then move my Ravagers forward towards the central objective. After that, Dave moves his Savage Giant forward 10 inches. I then place Jackin on swords and destroy those pesky stakes. He then takes Catelyn's name and influences the second set of Berserkers the same way Catelyn would for full ranks. 
Div marches Varamir forwards. And then finally, my last unit of the turn, my Tully Cav. I march them forward 10 inches, just outside of range of the objective marker. And from this point on, it's all Dave. He moves up some of his raiders and flips them ever so slightly so they can be slightly more awkward to charge. Moves the corresponding bear familiar on the right flank towards my ravagers. Marches his wolves over to the right flank of my ravagers. And last but not least, finally, Mag moves forward to enter the fray. At the start of round two, Dave brings on a shadow cat and places it on the right flank just behind the Ravagers. He then places Faramir's Eagle on said Ravagers. Dave's first activation are his raiders on his left flank, who charge my Tully cavalry straight in front of him. Unfortunately though, they clip the bog when they make their charge. I would love to say this was because of brilliant positioning, but unfortunately it was just sheer luck. Something that Dave didn't have, unfortunately, only getting one hit, which was handily swallowed away by the Tully Cav. Now it should be noted that what seems like a suicidal charge is actually quite a shrewd move. Now he's tied up my Tully Cav, and instead of attacking on nine dice, they're attacking on five dice. Following that, he activated his bear on the right flank and charged it into my ravagers. Dave rolls two hits initially and then gets the third on the reroll. I then defend and take two hits. Thankfully passing my panic test on a five. With my first activation of round two, I put Catelyn on swords and go hunt me some bears. She then influences the Ravagers to give them the full complement of dice. I managed to roll all hits and thankfully Dave doesn't make enough saves to spare the bear. With their first kill under their belt, the Ravagers move forward and pivot round so they're not presenting their arse to the four-legged friends at the back there. Next, Dave activates Mance Raider and places him on horses. He then uses his influence to move a Raider's unit onto the bog. Not wanting to wait around to be attacked, I swing my Ravagers around and charge into Mag. With my attacks, I play Northern Ferocity, which gives me Vicious and allows me to pick a Panic Token on the enemy defender. Unfortunately, as is probably the case with a lot of this game, I and we forget our tokens, so I forgot to put the Panic Token on there. The rolls at least are good and I managed to get all hits with the re-rolls. Dave then rolls defence and six go through, meaning three wounds for Mag. Dave rolls the panic test and passes it, but unfortunately I forgot about the panic token and therefore didn't ask him to re-roll the dice. Dave's next unit does a bit of a shimmy and then he uses his bear to charge into the great John Umber's unit. Rolling three dice, Dave manages to get two hits. Unfortunately, as I'm saving on sixes, I took two wounds. My next activation is Jacken, who I place on bags to try and get some wounds back from the Ravagers who took damage earlier on. I then take Catelyn's name again and place him on the Great John Umbers unit. Next up, just to make damn sure that Tully Cavalry don't go anywhere, Dave charges a unit of Raiders into the flank. Thankfully, none of the attacks hit. 
but to make 100% sure that those tullies aren't going anywhere, he moves his bear forward onto the bog and flanks the cavalry. As my next activation, I choose Dario's Berserkers to charge into the raiders in front of him. All I need is not to get a one. There's the one! There's the one! Before attacking, I use Winter's Might, which gives me Sundering and lets me attack on my highest attack value. On top of this, I have Dario leading the unit, which gives me critical blow and precision as long as I don't roll in once. Luckily for me, I didn't get any ones, but I did get two sixes, so that's two auto wounds and then eight hits on top of that. Dave's unit is defending on sixes and unfortunately takes six wounds. This is then compounded by a field morale check, which kills two more guys. Dave activates his wolves, moves them around the back of the ravagers and then hits them with a charge in the rear. Rolling three dice, he gets three hits on the reroll. I'm saving on sixes, fail, and get three wounds. I do, though, pass my panic check. With my next action, I attack the bear in the middle, but unfortunately only get five hits. Dave then rolls and saves all but one of the attacks, and then passes his panic check. For the next assault on my poor ravagers, uh, Dave charges Viramir into their flank. Thankfully, the dice gods shine upon me and Dave's only able to get one hit with a reroll. I then roll to defend, but take the damage. My fearless ravagers then fail their panic test and take an extra wound as well. In turn, I decide it's probably best I try to extract my Tully Cav from the impending doom that awaits them and attack the raiders in front of them. Only getting four dice, I have four hits, and thankfully the raiders don't have a high armor value, and so took four wounds. And the old gods be praised, because on top of this he fails his panic test and takes another four ah! wounds. Three from the panic test and one because they're raiders. Dave's next activation is to place Val on letters. He then uses her special ability to move his shadow cap further towards the Ravagers. For my next activation and sensing a unit snipe, I put Sansa on crowns and ask Dave's raiders to take a test minus one. He fails, ah! thankfully, and the unit is no more. This has the added benefit of the bear meeting its demise as well. My unit then pivot round to deal with the oncoming monsters coming from the west. Next up, Dave Shadowcat decides to join the party on the right flank and charge my poor ravagers. The cat gets two attacks and hits with both. I then throw a save on a six and fail with two threes. I do, though, thankfully, pass my panic test. My celebrations are cut short, though, as Mag turns around to deal with the pesky ravagers. Dave then rolls his attacks and does three automatic wounds, which is then compounded by my failure of my panic test, killing the entire unit. At this point, though, I thought I had an ace in the hole with my card that was last stand, but because the bloody wolves prevent all tactics cards and abilities, I couldn't play it, and so they just died. Dave then turned everything around and pointed them at the Great John Umber. He then moved Mag forwards to threaten the Great John's flank. Following this, Dave plays Enraged on a Savage Giant, which means he takes two wounds, but he gets to re-roll his attack dice, and I become panicked and weakened. Unfortunately, when Dave carries out the action, he only puts on the panic token. He doesn't add the weakened. And having never played Free Folk before, um, I just accepted that as gospel. That puts two wounds on him, yep. and allows him to re-roll his attack dice, and you become panicked. I mention this because we're both forgetting stuff left, right, and center, uh, but also it may or may not be important later on. Anyway, Dave rolls his charge, passes, and lumbers his giant into the ranks of the Umber Berserkers. Rolling six dice, Dave hits with all of them, 
And because I can't save anything against Savage Giants, I take six wounds. Ah! Followed by a horrendous panic test, losing three more guys and leaving the great John Umber on his own oh. to face down two giants. At the top of turn three, things aren't looking great for the Starks, with my Tully Cav completely bogged down on Dave's left, the great John Umber's unit all but decimated, my Ravager's gone, and only one unit of Berserkers left to deal with what seems like an unending horde of monsters and beasts coming in their direction. As a start of turn action, Dave places his ego on top of my unit of Berserkers. At this point, I should probably point out that this is the last turn of the game, and it's because we make we make a very big mistake um, with regards to the mechanics of the scenario itself, and more importantly, the objective cards and the auras that they give a unit. Having not played this scenario much at all, the only reason I realised that we were wrong was when I was doing this video, I read up on it and realised that the wording related to an activated unit and not a unit doing an attack. Now, I'm obviously thinking that on my first go, then I can get a free attack using Catelyn and have the Great John Umber use one of the cards from the start, the objective cards buffs, with precision to attack the giant in front of me. If I kill him, I can then potentially overrun, do some more damage to Mag, and then have at least a second attack, potentially if he survives. The additional irony is that when I went to do the attack, I completely forgot to use the influence card and I had to beg cap in hand to Dave if he would let me use it, which being a gentleman, he did. He let me use it. And well, this is how it turns out. Start with I play Winter's Might, which gives me Sundering and lets me re-roll my attack dice. On my attacks, I managed to get all hits with the re-roll, but with three precision wounds. Another sweet irony, had Dave remembered the weakened token on the Great Jam Umber's unit, he could have made me re-roll all of my dice. As it is though, he failed too, and that was enough for me to kill the giant. So the Great John Umber, feeling emboldened, overruns into Mag and has a go at him as well. Rolling the dice, I managed to get all hits with the re-roll. Dave rolls all the ones and Mag goes down with an additional four wounds. And with both giants down and the Great John Umber rampaging through his lines, Dave decides to concede. I'll start victory-ish, though Dave probably does have moral high ground on this one. All in all, there was a fair few mistakes going back and forth between us in this game, including obviously the mission type itself, but Dave's tactics were sound. Bogging down, my Tully Cavalry was great. Um, with a, a cheap unit, there was no way they were getting out of there anytime soon, which would have given his giants time to smash face and deal with the rest, and I couldn't have done anything about it. In my defense though, and going back to the point of no return, had I understood or had I known or had we known that an activation meant an actual activation and not obviously the combat, I probably would have still used an NCU. I would have placed Jacken down though for his precision. I wouldn't have used his take a name. I would have just used his precision on the Great John Umber. And with that, the same thing would have happened. I would have still killed the giant. I would have still overrun and I would have still killed Mag. Now, had Dave not been a gentleman, um, it does throw up a few interesting what-ifs in this situation. In the first example, he uses his weakened token, and I have to re-roll my dice. Of those nine hits, I will statistically get six, uh, six hits from that. Of those six, it's likely I get, it's technically 1.5 sixes out of that, so I could potentially get one or two sixes out of that. So that's at least one uh, precision wound. Based on that, he has to roll five dice and is likely to save 1.65, so potentially two saves, which means three of them hit. Of that, he would only take one wound because giants can only take a wound for every two hits. So this means he's taken one wound from the precision and one wound from the combat itself, meaning he's got two wounds left. He's very unlikely to fail his morale test, so I have to play Berserker Tactics. I therefore do one wound, plus one wound for every person I kill in my unit. As I only have one guy left, the Great John Umber, I do two wounds onto him, killing his giant. 
and well the great John Omber as well, but it denies him points. He doesn't get a kill because I killed my unit, not him, and Mag can't come in and kill my unit and get three points for obviously using the commander kill and getting the point for the unit as well. From that point onwards, things get a lot more close. Um, probably more weighted on his side, um, but it's very much down to does he stand still and take uh, bags, get some health back. He's also got a uh, shrugged off, so he could take that as well to take two more wounds back. Does he use one of his critters to sort of come in and sort of block the way? Um, does he charge into me? Um, if he stands still and doesn't block the way, then I can charge into him. It's likely, um, has he healed? You know, I would still maybe do four or five wounds onto him. Um, with that, he would hit back, but then because I still have last stand left, because I haven't used it yet, I then hit back again, and I kill Mag. At that point, though, I only have my Tully Cav left, and as much as they might be able to sort of extract themselves from that situation, it, it's unlikely uh, we're going to be able to win that game. Uh, he has more units, uh, he can sit on the objectives more than I can, and you know I've only got sort of three turns, two or three turns to sort of try and do any damage, but with his cats and his wolves flying around the place, I'm going to get bogged down again. The next example is if he uses monsters from the north. Um, if he does that, then um, I'm potentially having to take a panic test at minus three. Um, with that, that's like a 41% chance of succeeding. Um, and so it's, you know, it, it's not great. Um, the great John Umber would then probably run away. With that, one of his giants charges into my berserkers and um, take, you know, anywhere between sort of six and eight damage. Um, they then hit back, uh, potentially killing the, uh, the, the giant that's there. Um, Mag comes in, finishes them off. I then last stand it. With that last stand, I kill Mag and he's still got more units than I have. He's got six units and I've only got the one. And again, it's very unlikely that I'm going to be able to win that situation. The third example is if I don't uh, use Berserker tactics, I then um, just let him sort of, I take the I take the wounds on him and uh, let them charge me. Uh, with that, you know, the, the giant on the front of me has maybe four wounds. Mag's got three. Um, he has to make the decision, does he want to kill me with the giant in front of me or with Mag? Now, he'll get more points if he kills me with Mag. So it's likely he'll do that. He'll kill me with Mag, which is nearly 100% certain he's going to do that unless he's very, very unlucky. And then he'll move Mag forwards out of the arc of my Berserkers so they can't be charged. My Berserkers then have to charge the Savage Giant. Um, it's likely they will kill him. They then reposition themselves to come back so they're facing Mag so they're not getting sort of charged in the side. But he still has a lot more activations than I have and with his Wolf, Shadow Cat, Varamir and obviously the two sets of Raiders and the Bear, um, it's again very unlikely I'm going to be able to do anything of any major use, um, especially with Mag still flying around there. Long and short of it is, I was lucky. I was very lucky that uh, one, he uh, was, you know, he let me do what I wanted to do, um, despite forgetting about it, and two, um, that we were both, you know, we both got the scenario wrong, otherwise things would have not gone so well for me. But there you have it, um, the inaugural battle report done, uh, maybe took me a bit longer than anticipated to edit this monster, um, you know, it there's a lot going on. It might look like it's only like 30 odd minutes, 40 odd minutes long, um, but it took a long time to do. So I'm going to have to maybe rethink my processes or if I want to do one like this each time, it will just have to be once a month uh, instead of two where I was sort of going. But anyway, I um, haven't decided on how we're going to do this. I will happily take any constructive criticism from you guys if you want to sort of say, what we need, what we should add, uh, what we should take away, um, you know, what works, what doesn't, and we'll just see how things go. But apart from that, make sure you like and subscribe to the page, share the video, check out our socials, 
and uh, if you're in the Manchester area uh, and want to play some a Song of Ice and Fire, then come and join us at Element Games. But from that, I've been Matt Geary. My opponent was Dave Nolan. Um, good night. I'll catch you later.